afternoon. I'm with Don Swan. I'm the director of the Mississippi Alabama Sea Grant Consortium and also the Sea Grant Network Aquaculture Liaison. We're here today to celebrate the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative, better known as GOMRI. As a co PI of the Oil Spill Science Outreach Team, I've had the pleasure of working with GOMRI directly for the past six years. This partnership has brought great value to Mississippi and the greater Gulf of Mexico, in large part because GOMRI has funded research that is important to people in the area, whether they're natural resource managers wanting to understand the latest findings or weekend fishermen who just want to know that the fish they catch is safe to eat. Each Gulf state has taken or will take time to celebrate the impact of Gomery's decade of investments in oil spill science research and today is Mississippi's turn. Let me make this clear. The importance of the research that Gomery has funded cannot be overstated. By bringing science funding to the Gulf of Mexico, Gomery has made a lot of other things happen in the state from creating partnerships between scientists who have never worked together to launching the careers of graduate students and junior scientists, to getting needed information to those who rely on a healthy Gulf for work or recreation. In the first half of this event, we'll hear from regional and national leaders discussing the importance of Gomery in a larger context and sharing major findings that resulted from Gomery funding. After a brief intermission, we'll have a series of panels to hear the perspectives of those who work directly on Gomery research and those who use the findings in their work lives. We built in time for questions at the end of each hour, so please do not hesitate to place a question in the chat box for a specific speaker or a general question for all to consider. If you're watching on Facebook, put your question in the, com in the comments and a member of the team will make sure we answer it. On a personal note, it's I have made some great friends being part of Gomery. You know, Chuck Wilson, Mike Karen, Rita, everyone and Laura Bowie who I've known for a long time. It's just been a real honor to be part of this team, to be a small part of this team. Now I wanna thank Steve Simpier who's led the outreach team. He spent the last six years uh, making sure that the outreach team did what they said they were gonna do. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker of the afternoon, Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet, who's the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmospheres and Deputy Administrator. Admiral Gallaudet served 32 years in the U.S. Navy, completing his service in 2017. In his current position, he leads NOAA's Blue Economy activities that advance marine transportation, sustainable seafood, ocean exploration, and mapping marine tourism and recreation, and coastal resilience, in addition to overseeing many other initiatives within the agency. Admiral Gallaudet, I want to get it out there that you have lived in Mississippi. I hope you touch on that during your remarks. It's a pleasure to have you back. Hey, the Don, thanks for that gracious introduction. It's uh, wonderful to join you here in this uh, celebration, and you're absolutely right. I've been a resident of the Gulf Coast twice in my Navy career, uh, one time in Mississippi, one time in Louisiana, and both times uh, I just uh, delighted in the people, the natural environment of the Gulf, and, um, and of course the food. Uh, no one can uh, top, really top that when you get down to the Gulf Coast. So um, it's, this is just such an important event, and I'm, I'm just so excited to be here. Um, I should say that during my time in the Gulf Coast, uh, you know, I, I didn't do much in the area of environmental restoration, but we did do a great amount uh, in the Navy and environmental science and uh, modeling, for example, of the uh, loop current and the oceanography in the Gulf and, and the meteorology. So uh, that was a really exciting thing to at least touch on because I knew that influences so much in our spill response activities at NOAA. Um, and then during that time, I made great friends, just like you said, and I still have them. And it's just really nice to connect with them when I can. And, uh, and I'm actually on very good terms with the uh, current congressional delegation in Mississippi who've supported me when I was in the Navy and, and now do the same at NOAA. Um, and of course, most of you might know that uh, when I lived in Mississippi, my family went through Katrina and we lived in South Diamond Head and we lost our house in 27.5 feet of storm surge, the highest of anywhere. 
And, you know, much like the lessons we've learned uh, through Gomri, my family grew stronger through it. And we learned a lot of things and it, it made us uh, better. And I think we're doing the same thing, you know, in Gomri in terms of learning and responding and, and understanding and gaining a great amount of science uh, to help us manage the just the national treasure that is the environment of the Gulf of Mexico. And I'll tell you, it's never been more important as you could you know, think from the, see from this year, because the Gulf has just really been on the ropes. You know, you had Hurricane Laura and Sally and Beta and Delta and Zeta. That is just incredible. The uh, resilience of, of the people of the Gulf, uh, Gulf Coast uh, from this year alone. And, uh, and we've had on top of that harmful algal blooms, uh, hypoxia, as well as uh, uh, you know something, um, just the, the severe weather and flooding that have endured. And so I just want to applaud the people of the Gulf Coast for their resilience and especially the teams that support Gomery uh, because that in science is just critical and has been, I think really a, a, an example and a role model for resilience uh, across the country as coastal resilience becomes you know, more and more um, uh, uh, poured in and at people's attention. Um, as we look at the impacts all across uh, the regions of the West and East Coast and Alaska. Now, I'm really proud of my agency. NOAA has stepped up in such a big way in every line office to support the research efforts of Gomery and, and the resilience activities associated with it. Our weather service, of course, has really been um, at the front forefront of our, our, our work and preparedness. And I, I couldn't say enough good things about the forecasters in the offices around the Gulf Coast, as well as the National Hurricane Center, who, for example, with Hurricane Laura predicted landfall three days in advance to within less of less than a mile error. That that's remarkable and, and unprecedented and was just critical in terms of informing evacuations that saved thousands of lives. So the Weather Service has done great things and they've been supported by uh, the National Data Buoy Center in Stennis, Mississippi, or National Ocean Service has conducted overflights after every storm to, to compile imagery and, and send it to emergency managers to inform their uh, their routes and uh, and their uh, um, response activities. And then we have our own navigation response team at Stennis Space Center that's gone in after uh, the storms and conducted really critical surveys of the navigation channels in the, in the region to ensure they could be safely um, uh, traversed uh, for shipping to come back and, and really uh, contribute to the um, important part, uh, local economy in the region. And then you know, additionally, we've been forecasting for these harmful algal blooms uh, with our operational forecast systems. These are, these are, this is our Gulf operational forecast system, as well as um, characterizing the hypoxia uh, trends in the Gulf, which has informed uh, agriculture uh, uh, efforts uh, in, the, in the interior of the country. So a lot of we're just terrific activity. And then I could add to that, that we've had a great role in characterizing the Taylor oil spill that led to the Coast Guard taking legislative uh, uh, litigation against the uh, Taylor oil company and and conducting really remarkable work to cap that spill. So there's a lot there. I, I love my agency, I'm proud of it, and I'm proud of the partners that help us do this great work. On Gomery specifically, uh, let me just say a few things. First off, I think it's really terrific how the public-private partnerships involved with Gomery have advanced the activity, and that's just a model for what NOAA is trying to do across all of our research and operational domains. I'm also really excited about the fact that we brought in so many universities to contribute to the research. And that's really how we're able to get, you know, the, the most bang out of our buck is, is the partnerships like that. And then also we have the extension operations through Sea Grant that in, you know, in, in words that I'm used to in the Navy have operationalized the science and really put it into practice and applied it to, to, to benefit in terms of um, uh, restoration. And, and on the topic of restoration and, and the important uh, contributions that makes to coastal communities, I have to also shout out my uh, the NOAA Office of Res Restoration and Response, who are really uh, are, are kind of uh, the front line in NOAA for the activities that uh, Gomery uh, uh, undertakes. And so we have several divisions like the Emergency Response Division and the Assessment Restoration Division. Our chief scientist there, uh, Lisa DePinto, has been just uh, uh, you know a champion, and uh, I, I really I have to refrain from sending her messages of kudos and bravo Zulus because she does so much good work as well as the people in that office that she, she partners with. And, uh, and uh, in fact, the emergency response and injury assessment teams also have done terrific work and they were, they participated in a big way in the Go Moses conference uh, that, you know, and other, other supporting workshops and, um, and the production of fact sheets and bulletins and all that good outreach that Steve Sempier helps lead to, to, get the, to get the right you know, word out to the communities to, to use our information. 
And then I also want to point out a really terrific work by ORNR's Dr. Chris Barker. He produced a, and, and led really with 21 other authors this seminal paper that synthesized a lot of the science over the last decade. And it was published in the Journal of Marine Science and Engineering. And this is just a fantastic work. It just it highlights the complexity of modeling and predicting um, spills and, and, and how they disperse the, the complex physical oceanography as well as the meteorology. And they overlay events like hurricanes. And, and I, what I thought was terrific is he, he, his, his last bit of section in the, uh, in, the, in the article talked about you know, future modeling efforts with neural networks and artificial intelligence, which has been a main priority of mine personally as I've advanced the NOAA artificial intelligence strategy. So just a terrific, you know, kind of an example of all the good that can come out of uh, the response to this, you know, in, in these important events uh, like Deepwater Horizon. So um, I'll, I'll say also Susan Snyder is also, we've gotten her into our assessment response division. She's a, a basically a Gomery alum. And so we've benefited just personally and individually uh, by the fine work that has uh, um, been produced by Gomery. And then lastly, you'll know that our, 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 our National Centers for Environmental Information, NCEI, uh, that has a presence in the Stennis Space Center, they're in the process of uh, compiling and, and keeping for records and archives all the great data that uh, is being produced uh, by Gomri so that we'll be able to access it and, and, and perform you know, continued study and science uh, that will benefit communities for decades to come. So NOAA has a great you know, involvement here and I um, couldn't be more proud of the fantastic work in this decade of discovery that's occurred in Gomery and specifically in Mississippi.